What's going on, everybody? My name is Shimpact, and today we are interviewing Wolf Click, the finalist of the WBE. So, Wolf, explain to me. No, don't. Okay, you, don't explain anything. I, I refuse <laughs> to explain. Good. So, how how you feel about the regular season? So um, yeah, I I felt like it went really well. Um, for me, like. I think that I'm like a, a relatively strong draft league player, but I don't think that um, I'm as good of like a singles player just because I don't have the background. So I feel like early on, um, I have to really get used to, like I feel like I, I take longer to kind of warm up to um, to get used to my team and like the roles and stuff. Um, but overall, I feel like I um, have like a really strong draft and I like a lot of the Pokemon um, that I had. And uh, I feel like the regular season went pretty well. I was obviously like second overall going into playoffs which i think is um like pretty good and especially because there was a lot of other really strong coaches um in my division so um yeah overall i felt like i i'm glad the regular season was long because i felt like i really got time to get used to um my team and i feel like i had a couple really cool matches as well so yeah and develop a bond with your pokemon that's right yes especially genjar blastoise yes genjar blastoise <laughs> my, my my mvp yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, actually, I was think I was thinking about it, and I was like, "Damn!" Like, I, I I got so many kills with Blastoise, but I think I I it was just like it was just a couple matches where Blastoise got like five kills, and and most of them he didn't get that many, but I had a couple like five kill or four kill matches with Blastoise, and that's why he's got so many kills. Another question that I have is, I don't remember how did you, how many times have you actually drafted your own team? Um. Uh, every time except for my first league when I joined the oh, WBE. Okay. Um, so I think it's like I did like one GBA, one APA, and then two WBEs. And I think that's so four times out of five. Okay. Because I thought like two of your WBEs, someone like the first, I know the first one you didn't draft, but mm -hmm. okay. I had a lot of help, I think, from MV and Joey in my second draft. Um, but it was still like. I still consider myself drafting. I just ask them a lot like of questions and advice and stuff. But yeah, I definitely definitely really uh, appreciated those guys helping me out. Going back to the regular season. So in the mm -hmm. playoffs, po Joey was not able to face you. How do you feel about not being able to avenge your loss? This was a featured question by Pokeame himself. Yes, that, shout out to Pokeame. If you donate um, $20, you can also have your questions featured. Um, but, <laughs> um, you know, I was disappointed in a sense because... Um, I really felt like I had a strong matchup against Joey, and Joey's beaten me t twice, I believe. Yes, he was sure to mention that Heracross in the GBA. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so he beat me twice, and the first time I played him, he took my girl, and I was hoping oh, to get yes. her back. Oh, yes, I remember this. Uh huh, and I was hoping to get her back this time, but then he was like, oh, I can't let Wolf have his girl back, so he took he took Zeraora. Um, and if you look at my team, like Zeraora and Gothitelle, I really have very limited options against that. Um, Zero or in general is really hard for me. And so, um, yeah, so then I, I, I Joey six owed me that I was very sad and he, he wanted to make a statement. He didn't even want to, he didn't even want to not give me my girl back. He wanted to make sure that I knew that he wasn't getting my girl back. And so I thought, okay, well, if you have one more chance before sun and moon go away, like you can finally get your girl back against Joey. And then Joey was like, ah, like my matchup's not that good. And I can't like trade for zero Aura this time. And so he like, you know, went into the game code and he gave Noivern hundred percent accuracy and hundred percent crit rate. Um, and so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, in all seriousness, I was really looking forward to the match. Um, I mean, I was looking forward to either of the coaches cause they're both, I lost to both Joey and Vivid. And so I knew it was going to be a good rematch either way, but, um, I have a lot of respect for Joey as, as a player and as a person. And so, um, and I, I've, I've known Joey for longer as well. Like nothing against Vivid. I had, I, I, you know, was looking forward against both of them. But Joey specifically is someone who has now beaten me twice, and I really did feel like I had a strong matchup going in. And I was looking forward to seeing how he, um, like, like adapted his team to overcome some of the problems that my team presented, and also just to have, you know, a chance at redemption. Um, but I was, you know, I was, so I was looking forward to it, but I was also a little apprehensive because I didn't want to go 03, you know, especially when I felt like I had a good matchup. Because if there's one person who I feel like I could have a good matchup too and still get bodied. It's probably Joey. So um, I was I was disappointed um, to not play him again. But maybe maybe he let me off easy. You know, maybe I would have lost. I think there's a good chance at least that I would have lost. So yeah, maybe it's better to not play Joey and be in the finals than to play Joey and still not have my girl. Hmm. Interesting take. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. So there's a phenomenon uh -huh. that is in your channel. Yes. These are your intros. 
Yes. Were they this season? No. Um, I think they started in the GBA. I think. Okay. I I did you was it I I think you talked about bagels in the GBA. I th that's like I think the one that started them all. Um, okay. Yeah. So why? I that's a really hard question for me. I feel like, and I'm not sure if this is true, but the, my impression in my head is that, like, nobody was ever on time for league battles. As a league player yourself, I'm sure you've noticed that, like... No, I, the it's, w it's always me that's, like, holding me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it, but... <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, there's, like, a lot of times, and especially... Actually, the WB this season has been really good, but I remember when I was in the GBA, it was, like... I don't. I played like very, very, very few matches on time. Um, and you know, I was in college at the time, and I always like, I always have a lot going on, and so I'm always like on a pretty tight schedule where like I leave like an hour and a half to an hour to to play a match, or else I'm going to be late for something else. And so, um, or even even regardless, like I think I'm kind of I'm sensitive about time and stuff, and I feel like if you schedule a time, you should be on time. And so people were never on time, and I think like at some point I would just I don't I I feel like people were late, and I was all ready to go, so I feel like I just started recording. And like because like they weren't ready on time and so i would just record when i was supposed to start so i was still like making content and i think i think that's the origin but i'm honestly not sure like they could be they could be unrelated like i think like i think it was just like a mandate from heaven like i think i just woke up one day maybe and and some like i was just like i'm gonna talk about bagels in my video today i really honestly ship i can't tell you I, th I think it's because people were late and i had the extra time but that might not be true quick afterthought or yeah. whatever is it bagel or bagel i think it's i say bagel I, yeah because I, I, I said bagel and i didn't uh -huh. i didn't know if you were gonna say bagel as well so i just i, I have this uh, as you probably noticed I, I mispronounce things a lot um, no but i know you do that intentionally right but it's gotten to the point where it's not just in pokemon it, like it's in my life in general where like someone will say something and i'll just like say it wrong <laughs> so like i've gotten to the point where sometimes i can't tell what the real version of a word is like sometimes i'll say something and i'm like oh yeah so i was at game night the other day and um so oh, sorry context uh on thursday nights uh like every thursday um uh, my roommate and i have uh like a board game night and we invite people over and we make dinner for everybody and we just play board games um and we were playing this game where we had to it was like it involves swords it's called shadows over camelot it doesn't really matter it's a board game but you well, like one of the main mechanics in the game involves swords um and i kept saying sword and one of my friends was like wolf you're being so annoying stop saying sword like it's sword say say sword not sword but like i couldn't stop myself from saying sword like i was trying really hard because i knew that i knew that it was bothering her and I, like i really like i really wanted to stop but i i was like trying so hard and i couldn't say sword i had i was I was like sw sword <laughs> um so anyway i think it's bagel but it could be bagel because i think i've said bagel before as well i don't know anymore i've messed myself up all right what is your favorite intro that you've had <sighs> i think there was one that i really liked that got lost where i was talking about how you know you have to have a very high iq to watch my content yeah because I, like yeah <laughs> i felt i felt i felt that that's not yeah. true though because i it's watch your videos Oh, but you're, you're a smart guy, so maybe that is true. Hmm? Um, I think also, like, I feel like the bagel one is really what kicked off, like, a lot of my intros. Like, I feel like that was when people really started, um, like, yeah, the getting into them. Yeah, yeah like, honestly, like, and I'll, I, this, isn't, this isn't what you asked, but I, I do want to say, like, it's really nice for me because I feel like my community really likes the, like, the intros, and I get so many nice comments just about the intros. Like, I think on my last battle, almost none of the comments, let me actually check really quick. There's, like... There's 121 comments at the time that we're recording this, and I feel like almost all of them are about the intro. And that's like, I, I really like that because like for a while, before I was like making content, um, I like, my only experience with like people talking about me on YouTube were like recorded VGC matches and they were all like, everyone uses the same Pokemon and like, this guy's so lame, Matt. you know? And so like, or, you know, like, so it wasn't like nice comments. So I always had a negative view of YouTube comments. And so... The fact that I like I feel like I really am happy with the community that I've kind of um I don't want to say created, but the community I've brought together and and um yeah, just like the general comments are super nice. Intro starts at zero and the intro ends at uh <laughs> thirty-four seconds. You can stop 34. the video there. Wait, wait, chimp, when is this going up? Uh probably after you play. Okay. Okay. I wanna do 
Okay, I'll just ask you for, for your opinion. I kind of want to do a one-hour intro. People have been asking for it, for the finals. Yeah. Do you think I should? What if you just do a video that has no battle? <laughs> <laughs> do you think people would still watch? Like, people joke and say that they would, but do you think they actually would? Yeah. That's a good idea. You developed a bond with your... With my, with my Pokemon commenters. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I'm going to think about that one. I kind of want to do one hour intro, but that might be a better idea. But I feel like one hour intro is really funny. Yeah. Also, we'll have to see. my favorite yeah. one was the uh, the kimono backstory. Yes, that's a good one. I have to, you know what? I actually, I've, I've oh, actually, I, I have a project that I'm working on, but I can't spoil it. So I'll, I'll when it happens, I'll tell you. Yeah, I actually went on Amazon and looked up kimono, and then I was like, yeah. I'm actually not going to buy one, so. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still flattered, nonetheless. I also like your opinions, because I don't understand how anyone can say chocolate chip cookie is not the... Right! Thank you! Oh that my god, thank you. Like, I thought you were going to go with a hot take and be like, okay, sugar cookies. No! Oh my god, that's blasphemous. Yeah. Like chocolate, like how do you not eat a chocolate? Like, yeah, okay. I don't know. Right. Okay, I, yeah. I mean, see, you know, how I said you had a high IQ. It just, I, it just got higher in my estimation. Okay, so okay. back, back to the topic. What is right. your favorite team that you have drafted? Um, I would say either my current team or the one, the last WBE team that I had, um, with Tornadus, Theory, and Amoongus, um, Ente. What else did I have? Mega Tyranitar, that was really good. Yeah, that was, a, and I had Mew. Oh yeah, that team was super good. Um, I, I, yeah, I think I think either my current team, because I've only ever drafted five singles teams, mm -hmm. um, and one of them, well, sorry, four singles teams, because I didn't draft the first one. Um, and two of them, one of them was bad, like very bad. <laughs> and then one of them was like, it was the APA where there was like three drafts and then like a final draft. And um, it was a cool theory, but I, I didn't really have time to get used to my team. So yeah. Um, yeah, probably probably either this draft or the last one. Um, both of them had Tornado Theory in. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure. I really felt like my last one was like super strong, like Mew, Tornado T, Mega Tyranitar, um, Stoutland, Amoongus, Entei. I'm trying to remember what else I had on there. I don't I don't remember what else I had. I feel like I had Frost last at one point, but that was definitely bad. Um, Fortress, who I used pretty well, I think. Um, yeah, but I I think like that one was probably objectively. Maybe not objectively, but that one might have been better because like Mew, Tornadus T, and Mega Tyranitar and Amoongus were just so powerful that um, it was like a really strong defensive core and then like a lot of really good versatile options with Mew, Tornadus T, um, and Tyranitar all having like, especially Mew and Tornadus having like really different sets they could run. Um, but I think I've enjoyed using this team more actually. Like I've really enjoyed using Mega Blastoise. Um, and it's really interesting working with offensive wound conditions with like Jigglyth and Excadrill. Um, yeah, so I feel like my last WE like season two might have been stronger, but I think I enjoy using this one more. Yeah, I I just love like the way that you're able to chip away at their team with sand and all the priority and just like a little bit of chip. Maybe like I don't know if you use Rocky Helmet Tornadoes this season, but I feel like that's like a great option to just be able to do a seventeen percent to set up a Blastoise to finish it all with Aqua mm -hmm. Jet or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And I think a real strength of my team is that like I have so much good hazard removal. Like I have, you know, two really solid de or rap or like two good Pokemon that can also rapid spin and then um two really strong defoggers as well in Tornadus and Mandibuzz. And so I feel like just like my ability to keep hazard off my side of the field has been really good because like there was one season where I could never run I don't remember, I think it was APA where like Tornadus was like my only defogger, and so I couldn't I could never run assault vest because like my my I always had to use like a non assault vest item and you know because I had to I had to get defog on it um because my team was weak to hazards or something or I just wanted defog um and so I think like you know I ran assault vest extra drill with a rapid spin as my rapid spinner a couple times like I've run rapid spin on blasters a bunch um yeah and I, I think blasters is really interesting in particular because because of the priority of aqua jet like I'd be interested to know out of the um let me really check really quickly out of the like. 26 kills Blastoise has gotten. I'm wondering, I'm curious how many are Aqua Jet, because I'd guess at least 10, um, frankly, which is really weird because Aqua Jet is not a strong move, you know? So, yeah. It also discourages your opponent from being able to even bring hazards when you just have a sheer amount of anti hazards. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I could bring Stealth Rock, but he's just going to defog it away with one of his four Pokemon anyway. So I was like, uh. Yeah, I also like having two Rapid Spinners because. 
like you can set hazards up and remove and still like like oftentimes rapid spin as far as i can tell isn't super common in, in singles and so like oftentimes you have to choose between having hazards on the field or hazards not in the field not like hazards on their side and not yours like it's kind of all or nothing and so with rapid spin you can do cool stuff for like if you set stealth rock up and you don't and your removal that week is a rapid spinner rather than a defogger like it's not like a, it's not like it's like a waste of time you know like either you force them to waste a turn defogging or you rapid spin in which case like it doesn't remove your side so it's like a better investment yeah that's a common mistake i see a lot of people doing this they'll set up stealth rock their opponent will set up stealth rock and they're like oh i guess i got a defog now so they just right. go into their defogger and just waste yeah and it's turns. like yeah what's the point and you lose momentum there yeah so yeah. you would say that blastoise has been your favorite pokemon this season yeah i've gotten to do like blastoise is cool because it's like it's not fast you know and so the fact that i've been able to do so much damage with it like i checked i like was thinking of so many ways where like i could boost its speed but like there's literally no way to do it um and so yeah i think i think blastoise has been really cool just because I've gotten to do some really neat stuff with it. I mean, mostly it's been my workup sets, like sub workup yeah. Aqua Jet stuff. Um, yeah, like running physical a couple times. But um, just, I would, I, I feel like it's not about like using Blastoise as the breaker, but kind of just like putting it in positions where it forces a KO or setting up for end games where everything is either slower than it and in range or faster than it, but in Aqua Jet range. Um, that's been really neat as well. Uh, yeah. I think that to, game, that, there was four Aqua Jet KOs at least. With Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was like Mens, Alakazam, Dynasty. Diggersby, yeah, and um, Deancey, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, you're going up against Envy or Gator. We don't know yet. So, who do you think will win between them, and who do you want to win between them? Let me look. At, let me just. Sorry, I shouldn't have done this earlier. Let me pull up the matchup between them, um, so I can look at it really quickly. I so. In terms of who I want, I've I've played both of them twice and I've lost to both of them twice. Um, frankly, I think I would be more scared of going up against Envy than I would be of Gator, just based on um, like uh, like pre previous experience. Like I feel like I I don't know. Like I like honestly, I respect them both a lot, but their styles are kind of different, and I feel like I I feel like Envy is more likely to do some really off the wall stuff. Um, which is both, uh, I think, one of his strengths and one of his weaknesses. Because, like, I think, I think, having watched him this season, like, I think he is somebody who like can really catch his opponents off guard. But because he oftentimes does unorthodox stuff, he like if he then is caught off guard in return, it can be hard for him to come back because he has like he's normally like very specifically built. And so if things don't go according to how he's built, it can be tough. Whereas Gator, I feel like, is a little bit more conservative, still con still like creative, but like more willing to structured. go like a more yeah more structured. Like I feel like Envy is more like. I'm going to hit you with stuff you've never seen before. And Gator's more like, I'm going to build like a very solid, like you can, like, you know, what's coming, but you're still not going to be able to beat it style. I don't know if that's accurate, um, but that's just kind of my impression. Um, and both Envy and Gator have really like, uh, they each have like a Mon that I like a Mon or two that I think are really threatening for my team or several Mons that I think are really threatening for my team. So um, in terms of the matchup, like Envy says he's never beaten Gator. I was actually talking to him earlier this day. Um, and if I just look at the Pokemon, like, I feel like Gator's Pokemon just looks so much better than Envy's, like, <laughs> uh, with the exception of, like, Victini and, like, I guess Azumarill. Like, a lot of Gator's Mons are just, like, solid, really good Mons, like Zeraora, Keldeo, Heracross, Heatran, Celebi. Like, those are all really solid Mons. Um, but, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm really not sure who wins here. Like, I feel like it's kind of this... Like, I, I, I feel like Envy will win, but um, I don't really know why I say that. It's just, like, a gut feeling. Like my eyes tell me my, my eyes tell me Gator wins and then my heart tells me Envy wins. Dang. That was that was emotional. Yeah, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So this is your last WBE Sun and Moon season. Mm -hmm. This is your last game. Yeah. Any any closing remarks? Um, I feel really lucky to have been involved in this whole thing. Um, especially like my first season, I was only, you know, in because a coach dropped out. And so um, this, this like, this league was the one that, like, kind of taught me how interested I was and how much enjoyment I get from Draft League. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just really grateful. I want to say thank you to A-Drive and um, everyone who's helped with this season, all the analysts, Joey, um, and everyone who's been, like, involved and everyone who's watched. Because, like, I, I, I know people like watching the battles, but for me, like, the whole, like, taking apart a matchup and, like, looking at ways that I can... 
um, find like really interesting win conditions and weird sets that will work. Like that's like so much fun for me. Uh, and I've really, I've really loved like just participating in this and like trying my best and seeing like how I can do. And so, um, yeah, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone for letting me be, be a part of this and for watching and supporting. Um, and yeah, like it's been, it's been a really great project and I'm really impressed with how they've, um, managed the league. Uh, there's been almost no drama as far as I can tell, as far as I've seen, which is awesome. And, um, like everything was very professional and really well done. And so it's just nice that this thing that I get so much enjoyment from not only Pokemon, but like draft league specifically is something that I have the opportunity to do. So yeah, I just want to say thank you for that. But yeah, thank you for the interview. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>